I'd like to just hear from young people. How are you feeling? Race relations, race relations on campuses. I heard that when some of the black kids hang around with white kids, the black kids say, oh, you want to be white. And when it's vice versa, the white kids say, oh, you want to be black. So it looks like there is some tension still, even on campuses. Let's hear it. Um, I think basically on campuses, yes, you will, you will find people, you find the white group here, the black group here, and whatnot, whatnot. Because at the end of the day, we are different. We have to acknowledge that we're different. And you like to hang around with people who are the same as you. The problem comes in when you cannot accept people who are different from you. So I think you can't really say race relations, look at people, they're not black and white in one group. If you don't like a person, you don't like a person, whether they be black or white. You like someone who is like you. Mm -hmm. Well, the um, kids are talking about <laughs> Dr. Alicia, I, I would like to say that, you know, agreeing with the lady across there, values are universal. No society can deregulate values and hope then to maintain a decent society. Any society that has, through the long history of mankind, attempted to devalue morality has fallen. And if you just read the lessons of history, that is quite so. And the difference between, for example, uh, our black South Africans and our white South Africans is not really, the, the, the differences are superficial. Underneath it all are the common values of all society, or the common values of all mankind. In other words, those things that come about from natural law and from reason that make us live in a society helping each other, loving one another, and regulating that society in a way that civilization can be maintained. I also believe it's no good to go around blaming parents for one's own personal responsibilities but you and are defects. But responsible for them. We are no, responsible for them. I mean, them. we are to a degree because the environment in which we give them. But as we as parents ourselves, our young people don't seem to realize how much we really love them. And the things that parents try to do for their children are to preserve them from harm. They want them to grow up in a way that, that they can go through life without being hurt and without being damaged, without getting VD, without getting <laughs> pregnant out of wedlock, without getting divorced, without going into drugs. Now, these are real concerns of parents. Is this seeding them? <laughs> Um, I just want to say okay, that, that, that the, the, earliest, um, the earliest forms of, sociali of socialization occurs in the family, okay? And um, in terms of the family's role, for example, um, with regards to, to, to female children, there's, wh what I'm trying to say is that the family actually propagates in equality, okay, which we see in a broader society, like, for example, where girls are not supposed to do certain things. They're that guys are supposed to do. He's characterizing some families. He's specifying not, no. some families. But, but he might have grown up in a family like that. Wait, I'm not specifying certain families. Girls have to wash the dishes while the boys sit in the bedroom reading papers. Exactly. <laughs> and I mean, in terms of the roles that, that women have in society, it is, it is exactly because fa the but family women are different. That you way. have to admit uh -huh. there's a difference. Yeah. And if you don't see if you don't see that difference, you're quite blind. Linda, Linda, you want to leave them? Pardon? <laughs> you want to In terms of civilization, um, you, you spoke about civilization. I mean, who determines the standards and who sets the standards for civilization? It is, civil yeah. is it civilization to, uh, from a white perspective? No, okay. don't, don't keep bringing in this white thing because you're on a real trip about persecuting people who happen to be white. No. Now, don't let's do that. No. You're bringing that, apartheid no. and whitey to every sentence you use. But We're I in a new South Africa. Let's move away. Oh, you see, no, but then you cannot. that is exactly what I can't understand. But you can't. All of a sudden, we live in a new South Africa. And, and I mean, I, really, it's a new South Africa. Because I think that what has Fine. happened... Like Actually, I want to agree with what Nazir was saying about socialization first starting um, when you're at home with your family because that's that's where you first get socialized um and they are even in schools because um boys and girls are in, uh, encouraged to take uh, certain subjects like girls take home economics and and even the sports that you play it, it uh, the girls uh, play netball and you name it and the boys play rugby Did you really and want them to play rugby the girls yeah. 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 Yes. Okay, I mean, I don't see any 
anything wrong well, with it. Would they be able to compete with the boys? No, it's not about, it's not about no. being able to compete with them. But that's a rough game. No. No. Because I used to play soccer. After the break, we're going to find out whether girls should play rugby or not. I'm joking. But after the break, we'd like to talk about media and the influence of media on music and our youth's values. Studies indicate that the media plays an important role in young people, especially radio and television. What influences are we getting from them? The country has more than 12 million people aged between ages 13 and 25 years. There is a strong influence of American rap music and American dress. Even accents have changed to African-American accents. <laughs> Are we losing our identity? Yeah. 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 So you say what has changed? I say morals have not changed. Times has changed. In our parents' time, you never used to get 10-year-olds coming home telling you about sex. But today, you get your 10-year-old brothers who know more about what your parents know. Mm -hmm. So times have changed, not morals. We like have our morals. What do you think? Um, Any questions? Let's hear from you young people here. Okay. Um, um, with time comes change, and this time has brought us media today. We have rap in this country. <clears throat> it's here. Our children, are, we are listening to it. And to bring the parents and the children together, let us listen to our rap. We but have, the rap is vulgar. No, no let no, us no, listen no, to it. No, yes. We have the right of choice. But let's, let's us as children try and bring in our parents' values, such as respect. Let us use it correctly, and then we'll see that it will compromise. Hmm. You heard your mother. Let's hear. Do you agree with what your mother was saying? Well, partly. First of all, I think why parents, their children don't, don't listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I never. What I'm saying is parents need to teach instead of discipline. And me, I like hip hop. I listen to it. Why? Because during the time I was growing up, I wouldn't listen to bubblegum music because I thought it was nonsense. So I switched to hip hop because they were saying something real. That's why. Thanks. <laughs> the music is vulgar. Ubabu Jole next door. Oh, 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 oh. Let me tell you what this means. Let me tell you, let me tell you. The song says, my father has an affair with the lady next door. The kids say, it is true, these things do happen. Oh. No, you guys, they say Nijole next door. You have, are you really are doing that? And your children are saying this? And next door, let me hear you. 